So the current year is 2020, right? And according to Hollywood, we should have had flying cars by now. Or time machines or hoverboards. Yeah, they're all Back to the Future references, I'm sorry. But I want to talk about four movies that were set in the future of 2020 and they predicted that future completely wrong. Let's talk about it. Hello all you beautiful people out there, welcome to another Nerd News, a show created for nerds by a nerd. Hope you guys are having a lovely week, and this is actually kind of sad. This will be the last episode filmed in this current space. Starting this Saturday, we are fully moving to the new complex, so uh, that whole new setup is going to be completely different. I haven't figured it out yet, but it, we'll see what happens. It's kind of sad though. I really, I really miss this. I'm going to miss this, but things have to evolve. Things have to change. And let's just get on with this episode, shall we? <laughs> so when you think of the future, what, what just pops in your head automatically? Like I said, flying cars, humans with like robotic arms. Uh, do you think of, uh, I don't know, floating cities maybe? I mean, what, what pops in your mind? But Hollywood specifically in the year 2020, they, uh, they predicted certain things to uh, to to be true and some things to be kind of close, some things also to be completely left field. But Hollywood specifically likes to hone in on the year 2020. So a lot of those older movies have talked about the future. That's 2020, that's now. And half the stuff that these movies covered, none of it has happened. So there are four movies that I just randomly picked. There are, like I said, there are a ton, but these are just four that I wanted to talk about to see how close they got to now uh, or if they were completely wrong. But before we get into it, guys, if this is your first time visiting my channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit the like, the subscribe, and the notification bell. Uh, it would make me happy because when you click on that bell, I feel a little, a little, like a little touch on my heart. All right, with that out of the way, let's start this list, shall we? All right, we're gonna start off with an action slash sci-fi movie that pretty much was uh, the Groundhog's Day just with explosions. That's right, I am talking about Edge of Tomorrow. Now this film stars everyone's eclectic action hero, Tom Cruise and John Krasinski's wife, Emily Blunt. Now in this 2014 action slash sci-fi uh, epic film, and in this 2014 action sci-fi flick, the movie revolves around an alien species who pretty much, well, they almost decimates the entire human race. And because of this invasion, the world is forced to form a global alliance. And this alliance is called the Defense Force, and their sole purpose is to annihilate these aliens, essentially. Now, the soldiers in the Defense Force uses exoskeletons. These skeletons kind of give them uh, strength, mobility, speed, pretty much it's like they're leveling up every time they put on a suit. Now, all this happened in the movie in the year 2020. That's when the aliens came, that's when the exoskeleton suits started to become a thing, and this is what 2020 was going to look like. Did they get that right? Kind of. No, they did. The aliens didn't happen. I mean, we would know by now, right? But the exoskeleton suits actually became a thing in 2019 by the U.S. military. Now, the U.S. did initiate a $6.9 million agreement to actually make this suit a tangible thing that you could wear and be a super soldier, essentially. I mean, as you can tell, they are <laughs> nowhere as close as they are in the actual movie. I mean, they do have some moving parts. Uh, the legs are actually... The legs actually look pretty similar to the movie, but they don't have the big gloves that the movie has. They don't have all the rockets that you can shoot off of it. It just simply, this version, the actual version, makes it so that I guess you're stronger and heavier. So uh, they failed. But, you know, it, something like that, if that got into the wrong hands, that would be scary. So I'm kind of glad they failed. But who knows? I mean, there's still a chance that aliens could come down, take us, and we're gonna have to upgrade those suits and uh, sign me up, I'd fight aliens. Next, we're gonna look at 2013's monster versus robot film directed by the brilliant Guillermo del Toro. And that film is Pacific Rim. Just the first one, the second one is absolutely horrible, so just the first one. Now, Pacific Rim is another one of those films that depict the world being uh, attacked by monsters, essentially, and the world is just, you know, gone to poo poo. Now, the giant monsters are called kaijus. Follow along, kaijus, let's spell it. Kaiju. Now, the kaijus are threatening mankind and the world. Uh, they are coming from a specific portal from the Pacific Ocean. And how do the humans respond to this global threat? 
Well, they get giant robot mech suits that two people can climb inside. Those are called Jaegers. Now, like I said, the Jaegers are controlled by two people. They're controlled via mental link. So they pretty much, one uses the left side of the brain, one uses the right side of the brain, and together, you got it, one giant robot. Now, is this mech suit something that actually exists here in reality? Actually, yes. Back in 2005, a Japan company by the name, okay, I can't pronounce the name, so this company. This company created a suit called the Landwalker. Kind of an okay name, I, I like Jaeger better, but Landwalker will work. Now, this giant mech suit looks <laughs> it's a smaller scale, as you can tell, than the actual Jaeger uh, from the movies, which is like the size of, like, bigger than the Empire State Building. It's massive. So a human can't go inside of it. You can make it move, but there's a catch. It doesn't really run. It doesn't jump. It doesn't have super speed. It doesn't have, like, a chainsaw. The only thing it really does, it kind of just shuffles along. It kind of shuffles along, and like I said, the only thing it really does, it shoots like metal balls from it. Watch out, Kaiju. It actually kind of reminds me of the game Crossfire. So it's like a mech suit that shoots Crossfire BB guns at people. <laughs> You'll get caught up in the Crossfire. Yet again, we're just gonna have to wait for the aliens to come down. That's a solution for everything. We just need the aliens. Next, we're gonna move on to 2011 in a Hugh Jackman boxing movie, but not boxing for humans, boxing for robots in that of real steel. So in this film, boxing is no longer a sport for humans. It consists of robots that are trained, essentially, and controlled by humans. Now, in this movie, Hugh Jackman plays a former boxer who is knee-deep in debt, and he ends up using his own robot called Adam to help him get out of said debt. The idea for the movie is actually really, really cool. The movie wasn't that bad. I just love Hugh Jackman, so I'll see anything he's in. But did this actual boxing fad come to life here in reality? No, not even close. So what we actually have here in reality is two shows, two competitive shows involving robots. So they are Robot Wars and BattleBots. Both shows essentially are like a battle arena, just not in the boxing form, but literally like little robots or medium-sized robots fighting each other. Now, back in 2017, there actually was a really big tournament with the US team, the Megabots, and Studio Bashi from Japan. Like, it was a pretty big deal. Like, people were into that. But I guess we're, you know, a few years away from actually, you know, it's not really a few years away. We could have this be a thing. If we can create robots where people push around. You ever see those videos where they push robots around trying to lift boxes and, you know, working manual labor? messes me up. I hate that video. But if we can do that, then we can make boxing robots that we can control. Come on, we can control a, a, a drone through a phone. So, you know, a robot the size of me or bigger. Yeah, make it happen. And lastly, we're going to move on to a Stephen King novel that was set in not 2020, but 2025. The book slash film is called The Running Man. That's right, The Running Man. Starring everyone's favorite Austrian actor, Arnold Schwarzenegger. All right, he's the only actor from Austria. So, yeah. He's everyone's favorite. Get down, get to the chopper, like and subscribe. I had to do it. So Arnold Schwarzenegger plays a falsely accused prisoner who is forced to join a, uh, a violent TV show. Now this TV show that he has to participate in is really messed up, man. It, it takes the convicts, all the prisoners, they put them into this giant kind of like world where they are literally hunted by actual killers who if they kill them, it's fine. It's all part of TV. As long as the ratings go up, doesn't matter. So 30 years after the film, that film came out in uh, 1987, actually. Um, I didn't realize it was that old. It's not that old. I was born in 83, but it's old-ish. But did this come to life here in 2020? Well, yet again, kind of. I mean, lately we have seen the rise and fall and then rise again of reality TV. Good and bad, we have all been glued to at least one reality TV show in our lifetime, and if you deny that, you are lying. So let me introduce you to Steven D. Zalia. Zauza, Zauza. I can never pronounce anyone's name. He pitched a uh, reality show that was pretty much identical to this movie plot. Uh, it's a little program you might have heard called American Gladiators. Now, Steven actually, uh, <laughs> when he was pitching this idea to the execs at the time, he showed them Running Man, and he told the board, he goes, you see this? We're gonna do exactly this. Minus the murder. Seriously, he said that. And right then and there, I, I would be like, yes, you have my money because that's hilarious. So in a way, this came true. Take off the murder aspect. And it literally is people fighting for something, an end goal. In the movie, 
The goal was to live, to survive. In American Gladiators, it was to earn money. A little different incentive, but you get the picture. And if you haven't seen American Gladiators, do not watch the reboot that they had. The original one was amazing. Seriously, one of the best shows ever. Now these movies, you know, they got kind of close to reality, um, but some of them are completely off. Yet again, these are just four movies. I could have picked at least 14 more movies, but you know, I wanted to make this short and simple and just to put a smile on your face. But guys, that was it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, what kind of episodes or what kind of topics would you like me to cover? I want to know what's nerdy to you. What do you find nerdy? Let me know in the comments below. I want to make an episode based off of your suggestions. So let me know, guys. But what wild predictions do you think the future of movies will have in our future in reality down the road? And until next time, guys, remember, no movie and or no one can predict the future unless you're the Simpsons. They predicted a lot. Seriously, if you don't believe me, Google Simpsons future predictions. It's going to blow your mind.